hello students today we will discuss about the second uh, part of memory technologies earlier session we were discussing about cache memory which is the closer memory of processor we have seen the different categories of cache memories and how we can improve the performance by doing some optimizations on the cache memory so we have seen many types of cache optimization techniques and today's session we will be discussing about uh, some hardware related working of the memory uh, devices like uh, the um, primary memory and the cache memory now the performance measure of main memory is mainly uh, based on the latency as well as the bandwidth so two performance measures that are used for uh, getting the details about a, a system is uh, related to the memory's latency and bandwidth so latency is the primary concern of the cache also because uh, how long it will take to uh, get the response or read the data that is actually called as latency so uh, that means uh, if uh, the latency is more uh, it will it will actually affect the time for hitting the data from the primary memory so uh, in the case of main memory latency so uh, this is our processor this is our cache memory and this is our primary memory so if the processor is not getting a data from here automatically the cache need to access the data from the primary memory so this is the latency this is the latency the time taken for accessing the data from the primary memory so the main memory latency is the primary concern of the cache so it will decide the performance of the cache how long it will take to get the data or uh, the missed data from the primary memory into the cache memory so that the processor can access the data directly from the cache memory so main memory latency will affect the performance of the cache memory because it is the uh, it is the um, thing to be done if there is a, a cache miss and that is actually called as a miss penalty so due to the miss penalty will be having some latency for accessing the data similarly main memory bandwidth the second term that is bandwidth that is also a performance measure it is the primary concern of uh, concern of multi processes and io devices when we use multiple processes more than one processes executing simultaneously it will decide uh, or it will affect the bandwidth of the main memory because how much data can be accessed total number of bytes per second uh, how how much data can be accessed by different processes different processes that are executing simultaneously so that will actually decide the speed of the entire processing so latency is the time taken for retrieving the data from the cache memory or from the primary memory bandwidth is the number of data that can be taken within a given limited time so these two will affect the overall performance of the uh, main memory uh, through which we are accessing all the required data to the cache and from the cache to the processor that are expecting some data now the popularity of multi-level caches and their larger block sizes so last session we have seen one of the optimization mechanism is to increase the size of block present in the cache so uh, another technology is the multi-level caches if you have multiple levels of caches available so that if one is not available within one cache if the data is not available here it, it can look into the next level of cache if it is not available here it can again go to the next level of cache even if it is not available it can look into the primary memory so if you have multiple levels of uh, caches it will also uh, increase the performance of the entire system so uh, uh, because of these multi-level caches many many of the systems are uh, currently following multi-level caches and also they are using larger blocks because the cache also consists of larger blocks because of these the main memory bandwidth uh, 
uh, is uh, important to cache also because uh, how how much data can be accessed from this particular primary memory it is depending on the size of block present in the cache memory and it is also depending on the number of levels uh, of caches available within the system so overall if you say latency and bandwidth if you consider these two performance measures will be it, uh, actually um, uh, is used for identifying the performance of the entire system uh, and the performance of the cache memory also now earlier innovation was to organize the dram chips that made up the main memory so we were using dram memory for creating the primary memory so what is dram dram is actually dynamic random access memory so we are having two memory cache then we are having primary memory so this is cache and this is primary memory so normally this primary memory is made of dynamic ram so it is an example for ram random access memory but it is made of rand, uh, dynamic random access memory and this cache is also a ram but it is uh, made up of static or s ram a cache memory is made of static ram so uh, both are actually uh, faster memory but when compared to this primary memory or dynamic ram static ram is little more faster but it is uh, uh, having uh, less size when compared to the uh, primary memory size so dynamic ram chips are actually used for making the main memory uh, like uh, main memory normally consists of a number of memory banks a group of memory banks are available different sessions are available and each of these sessions are made of dynamic ram so why it is called as dynamic ram you will see so now the higher bandwidth is available using uh, when we are using number of memory sessions by making the memory and its bus wider so if we use uh, a larger uh, I mean a large wider bus in order to connect to this primary memory if you are using a wider bus we can carry more data to the cache memory and from cache to the primary memory so we are making the bus wider so that we can how higher bandwidth because more data can be accessed within a given limited time to allow memory system to keep up with the bandwidth demands the modern processes memory innovation started happening inside the uh, so all the innovations are made on the dynamic ram chips so that uh, we can enhance the behavior of the memory and every every time when a new system is being designed by the architect they are actually making so earlier we have seen about the trends in technology where we are focusing on integrated circuits the uh, the uh, formation of integrated circuits in terms of uh, transistors and they are placing inside the chip so memory is also a chip so dynamic ram is also a chip where we are utilizing the different memory innovations so that we can improve the performance of the primary memory now memory latency is quoted in two measures so we have discussed about memory latency this is the time delay between the cache and primary memory this is actually called as latency so it is measured in two different uh, uh, dimension one is called as the access time and second one is called as the cycle time so what is access time it is the time taken between a read request and the requested word arrives so it is time between a read is requested so here starts a read request it will go to the primary memory then it will get the corresponding word from his this primary memory and get the word back to the processor through the cache that is actually called as access time how long it will take to access a particular word from the starting point as a read request 
this is one of the measures used with memory latency this delay and second one is cycle time that is the minimum time difference between uh, two unrelated requests to the memory so there are two requests one request arrives and there is one more request to memory they are independent they are unrelated requests and the time difference between two requests is actually called as cycle time so there is no relation between two different requests all are requesting to the memory but uh, uh, they are not interleaving they are having independent so they can execute independently so uh, uh, when we are having two different requests to the memory for two different data what is the time difference between these two that decides the cycle time of the memory latency now all the computers since uh, from 1975 uh, onwards they uh, they were using dynamic ram for the creation of main memory and static ram for the creation of cache memory so dynamic ram is used for main memory and static ram is used for creating cache memory now the uh, we will discuss about sram initially then we will look into the dynamic ram so sram is basically used for creating uh, cache memory so we will see the features of sram so uh, the dynamic nature of the circuit in dynamic ram so we are uh, uh, considering dynamic ram for explaining sram the basic difference between sram and dram so dram usually requires a data to be written back after being read so assume that we are having a data h in the primary memory so this is the dynamic ram dynamic ram which is used for storing some data this is part of the primary memory so it consists of a data h now if one uh, uh, one process requires the data h it will read the data just after reading it requires one more operation that is called as the same data to be written once again that is actually called as a refresh refresh so normally uh, when we uh, when we open our computer system we are also doing this refresh right click uh, right click and refresh what is actually happening so everything will be written once again so from the primary memory using dynamic ram if you are trying to access some data or for reading some data just read the data just after reading do a, re def a refresh that means we need to write the data back once again so it will take more time because reading will take some time and refreshing will also take some time so the total time taken for accessing the data from the dynamic ram or primary memory is more when compared to the static ram because static ram is not following or which is not having this refresh mechanism so the uh, dynamic ram always requires a refresh writing the data back but the static ram don't need to have a refresh so the access time is very close to the cycle time it is just like having two different uh, uh, dif two different uh, memory requests and that is happening af one after another that means this is the first cycle and this is the second cycle minimum one cycle we are having a, a gap between two different requests because directly it can take the data so that just take it from the cache then this also just take it from the cache but if it is from primary memory just after reading one more second will be wasted one more cycle will be wasted for refreshing the data that is present in the dynamic memory so static ram is actually uh, uh, using six different transistors for storing each bit so uh, in the memory we are storing the data in terms of bit bit usually representing 0 and 1 for storing these bits we are using for each bit it is using six different transistors for storing the two bits then the static ram also requires only minimal power it requires only less power to retain the charge even if it is in the standby mode so the charge requirement of cache memory is also very less so one more difference between static ram and dynamic ram is dynamic ram is uh, actually m uh, means both uh, rams random access memory we can access the data randomly from anywhere from any location from the memory static ram also we can access it from the uh, 
different locations of the same memory but uh, both uh, one more difference is means when compared to the secondary and other category of memory the static and dynamic ram uh, is uh, volatile means uh, it will it will uh, remove all the data that is present within the memory when the power goes okay so all of you know that because um, primary memory or cache memory will not retain the data that was uh, used earlier if the power is gone the entire data present in the cache as well as primary memory will also gone now earlier uh, most of the desktop and server system were using sram chips uh, for their uh, different levels of caches so uh, static ram was used for creating the primary level secondary level and territory levels of caches so this is the case where we are having multi level caches available now but uh, initially earlier they were different different levels of caches but nowadays all the processors are having uh, or they are integrated into a single processor chip so within the processor itself all the cache they are integrated within the processor so different levels are also integrated within the same processor chip so the access time for large third level on chip caches are typically two to four times that of second level cache so uh, suppose this is the first level second level and third level cache and this is the primary memory so uh, normally from processor the, uh, this is it is having the this is the first level access time is less less but uh, if it is not there it need to go to this so access time is more if it is not there it need to go to the third level access time is again more if it is not available in any of these three levels of caches it need to look into the primary memory so when compared to the uh, access to the uh, primary memory the static memory levels will be having uh, less access time but when the different levels are being increased uh, the time taken will also be increased but uh, it is still uh, three to five times faster than accessing RAM because this is far away so this is better than this one this is even better than this one and this is even better than this one okay now static RAM is a type of semiconductor memory that uses the bistable latching circuitry or flip-flop bistable latching circuitry normally uh, it is called as flip-flop it is used for storing a single bit now sram is faster and expensive than dynamic ram and the power consumption of sram varies widely depending on how frequently it is being accessed so the power uh, consumption the usage of power for the static because every time the, the processor is not referring to the cache memory if it is using more cache memory more most of the time uh, the power consumption will also be more in some instances it can uh, use as much power as uh, dynamic sometimes it will be using more memory uh, when it is used in uh, um, uh, more uh, frequencies and some ICs can consume many watts for full bandwidth so that depends on the um, IC because we are having different IC uh, integrated circuits was developed in different formats every time there was enhancement so uh, that also depends on the ic that was used for creating the primary or uh, the cache memory now this is the structure of a sram memory so i i'll just uh, discuss the uh, pattern of how the bits are being stored and what are the different components used for storing that uh, bit so if you look into the sram architecture it consists of six transistors this is the first one m1 m2 then m3 and m4 so these four transistors are used for storing the bit so this location is actually used for storing the bit so this is the combination of four transistors now we can see two more transistors one is m5 and second one is m6 
these two are used for control controlling the access to the controlling the access to the bits whether this bits to be accessed by some outside processor or some other part so whether uh, some data can be stored into this uh, memory that will be decided by these two external control transistors so totally this is an example of uh, six transistors this is usually called as 6t sram 6t sram but in, in later we had 80 uh, 10t etc Th that type of because we have improved the number of transistors present in the uh, chips so this is a traditional example of sram there where we use six different transistors in which four transistors are used for storing the bit and two transistors are used for controlling the access to the uh, memory area where the bits are being stored now you can see two data part one is this is a bit line this is also a bit line we are having two bit line in which here we are passing uh, one bit value and this is the direct opposite of that the complement of that bit value so what is the uh, speciality of flip flop flip flop is actually so if it is producing a result this result is given as the input of this one so this is the voltage it is getting along with that it is taking the output of this one also similarly the output of this one also given to this and it will also take the voltage also so flip-flop actually provides so one input will be directly taken then so this will be the flip-flop the result of this is also given as the input so one input and maybe the result of some other maybe the result of some other this will be taken as the input here okay so this is the format of flip-flop so uh, uh, two bit lines are connected then a word line is connected here this is wl is word line this is the voltage word line so word line means each word we need to identify each word so this consists of lots of bits so here we'll be having different bit lines available for storing different bits so the combination of different bit lines forms a word so this is the word line which is connected to each individual bit lines so there will be different pairs available okay so voltage will be applied then uh, this transistor is opened then here we can store the data which was passed for example one is being passed from here so open this the data will be stored here now similarly if uh, somebody want to read the data from this uh, memory the same thing will happen switch on then read the data from the memory so we can write the data into the memory as well as we can read the data from the memory it is happening through the bit line with the support of word line and the storage uh, uh, for storage we are using some uh, transistors through which we are accessing so this is one input through this bit line we are getting q so in this opposite side we will be having the complement of that so this is the format of uh, SRAM. We are not discussing in detail about uh, the other electronic related areas. Just listen to the structure of how SRAM looks like. So uh, it it is made up of six uh, MOSFET. MOSFET is the transistor that is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. That is the name of that transistor then it consists of four transistors where we are storing a bit each bit is stored in these four transistors they are uh, uh, cross coupled inverters uh, they are cross coupled you know one, uh, one two four transistors they are cro cross coupled and they can store uh, two states zero and one and we are having two additional access transistors available for controlling the access to the storage cell during read and write operation very clear so you can just listen to the uh, diagram and have an explanation on how 
uh, the bit is being stored how who, who will be controlling the access and from where the data will be uh, provided from where the voltage will be taken and uh, the reading and writing of data from the memory cell now this is the internal organization of any chips uh, present in the system that is a memory chip so uh, there will be a number of address decoders to find out a particular address you need to find out where the actual data resides within the memory so we should have an address de decoder and these are different word lines it is exactly similar to the previous case we are having different word lines available and each word line is divided into different bit lines so these are bit lines so this is bit zero it can be an input can, so data input or output so input can be given from here to this uh, each word line from each word line anywhere we can store the input that is given and if you want to retrieve some data we can uh, retrieve the data from any of this cell by referring different rows different word lines and within each word we are having different bit lines bit lines one side will be having uh, the val bit and other side will be having the complement of that so b1 b1 dash b up to b7 b7 dash so by referring different rows by different uh, referring different word lines so all these are memory cells so all these so this memory cell is made up of flip flop the 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 flip flop was uh, actually explained in the previous diagram so here in this circuit we are having a right circuit as well as we are having a sense amplifier also for uh, uh, getting the information from the memory cell for sen sensing the uh, data that is from the memory so it can be used for read write as well as for uh, sensing the data so this is the organization of bits in a normal memory chip this is the general general uh, uh, pictorial representation of uh, memory chips now we will discuss about dynamic ram technology so earlier ram uh, dynamic ram um, grew in capacity so we are focusing on providing more capacity to the primary memory and the cost of the package with all the necessary address lines was an issue because for all the rows providing address lines was very difficult because if you had more number of uh, transistors and more number of rows available it was a difficult task to have more number of address lines to referring each of these addresses so the solution was to do multiplexing on these address lines so even in the previous diagram it was given like uh, a multiplexing so more word lines are available but the address is actually being multiplexed because we are using only some addresses and that is being multiplexed to refer to different word lines present in the different number of uh, rows so the solution was to do multiplexing the address lines by cutting the number of address pins in the uh, architecture and one half of the address is first sent so uh, when we do multiplexing we cannot send all the data uh, together so one half of the address is first sent that is called as row access drop so first of all it will just send a, an address for accessing the row for accessing a row then the second half it will send an address for accessing a particular column that is called as column access drop so first stage only row one particular row will be accessed and in the second half one particular column in that particular row will be accessed so this data can be retrieved so we use two terms row access drop and column access drop for accessing a particular bit present in the memory chip now these names uh, row access drop and column access drop came from the internal chip organization since the memory is organized as a rectangular matrix addressed by rows and columns that is why uh, we are calling it as row access drop as well as column access drop so this is the uh, expansion of uh, dram how dynamic ram will be uh, executing so we are having a different address lines address buffer is there for accessing different memory locations so uh, 
initially one half is used for raw decoding so different rows will be decoded so this is the memory array we are having some number of bits into bits rows are available so this is word line and this is bit line so just a short diagram of the previous memory organization so one half is given for call, uh, means one half is given for row decoder one row will be decoded second half is given for column decoder so this data will be retrieved so for that we are having writing and reading we are having send sample fails and io and this is the storage cell similarly we are having several cells available within this memory array a number of memory cells are separated in terms of rows and columns so this is data in and this is data out from this particular memory location so address is divided and each address one half is given for uh, row and second half is given for column decode these two identify a particular bit and the bit will be given as the output of this particular memory architecture now uh, this is uh, another uh, another format of same situation we are having different address lines through which this is the row access strobe where we need to access uh, row address decode the row then access the particular row then this is the column address latch by using cas column uh, that strobe uh, then it will send to the column decoder then by using this uh, it will sense or uh, write the data that is present in that particular row identify that particular column and read or write that particular value so these are the inputs different data is taken as input or it can be taken as the output also now the cells uh, explanation for the diagram the cells are organized into form of 4k by 4k arrays it is given to rows and columns now 4096 cells in each row are divided into 52 groups of 8 so there are 52 different groups and each group consists of 8 cells so that a row can store 52 bytes of data this is the traditional dram uh, placement of uh, cells during a read and write operation the row address is applied first i have already mentioned that it is loaded into the row address latch in response to the ras input row address stop then the read operation is initiated in which all cells on the selected row are read and refreshed so refresh is must because it is a dynamic ram then after the row address is loaded the column address is applied to the address pins and loaded into the col column address latch under the control of cas column address row applying a row address causes all cells on the corresponding row to be read and refresh during both read and write operation so these two combination read and uh, read row and column together will retrieve the data on a particular set so this type of dynamic ram is usually called as asynchronous dynamic random access memory the timing of the memory device is controlled asynchronously that is why it is called as asynchronous dynamic ram the timing is governed by the uh, two operations row address stop or uh, column access stop this is the internal organization in a different format so we are having uh, these are the columns okay so uh, when we further look in detail to the internal organization of memory so here memory is divided into number of banks memory is divided into number of banks so these are different banks b1 b2 b3 and b4 so now in this case we are having four different banks available now each bank is divided into number of rows so these are different rows this is row 1 row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 so each time when we want to access some particular 
memory location it will perform two operation one is pre and second one is act pre is actually called as pre charging and act is called as activation so pre charging is used for uh, getting the particular row and particular column or from the particular bank we are using pre charging then active 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 activity is used for uh, it is used for accessing the particular column from that bank from that row so we'll see the explanation memory is divided into several equally sized but independent sessions called as bank we have seen in the diagram it allows the device to operate on memory access commands in each bank so we can have different access simultaneously if you are having multiple banks available and the access is also interleaved like a pipeline manner now uh, modern dynamic rams are organized in banks typically four four uh, DDR3 in DDR3 we are having four banks available so that depends on the type of uh, drum that we are using each bank consists of series of rows we have seen that some rows are there sending a pre-charge a pre-charge command opens or closes the bank so I'll just look into the previous diagram once again pre-charge will open or closes the bank so pre-charge will open or closes the bank then a row address is sent with an activate a row address is sent with an activate which causes the row to transfer to the buffer so a row address is sent with an act which causes the row to transfer to the buffer so the row will be transferred to the buffer so this is the buffer row will be accessed to the buffer by using an activate command When the row is in the buffer, it can be transferred by successive column addresses. When it is in the so row, from that row, we need to find out each of the column from that buffer, it can be transferred. Now, row access time is related to latency. So, first of all, we need to find out a particular row. If we are having some number of rows available, identify a particular row that is actually happening during latency. That is the time taken for accessing that row row then column access time or data transfer time is related to the bandwidth so identifying a particular column from that row is the time taken for or that is referred to as a bandwidth in case of memory access to pack more bits per chip we are using uh, uh, normally DRAM use only a single transistor to store a bit but uh, uh, um, dynamic RAM cycle time is traditionally longer than the access time due to refreshing. We have already mentioned that uh, it introduced multiple banks and it allow rewrite portion of the cycle to be hidden. All the bits in the row can be refreshed simultaneously just by reading that row. So all the row, uh, the row, the entire row can be refreshed simultaneously without wasting more time. Similarly, every dynamic RAM in the memory system must access every row within a certain time window. Also, memory controllers include hardware to refresh the DRAM periodically. So, it includes memory controller includes some extra hardware to refresh. So, the refreshing operation is done by an additional hardware associated with the dynamic random access memory. Now, the designers always try to keep time spent refreshing uh, to um, uh, less than 5 percentage of the total time that is the happening but uh, still it is wasting some around 5 percentage of time for refreshing so Amdol uh, suggested a rule with a memory capacity should grow linearly with the processor speed to keep a balanced system so uh, uh, whenever the processor so this is the processor and this is the memory so whenever the processor capacity is increased the memory capacity must also be increased so this was the uh, rule suggested by Amdol for developing a new memory for newly de developed processes for example 
a thousand MIPS processor should have thousand MB of memory. So it depends on the processor, it should have some memory enhancement also. Now dynamic RAMs are commonly sold on small boards it, uh, that is usually called as DIMMS DIMS that is dual inline memory modules. So memory memory is placed within a particular board called as DIMS. It usually consists of 4 to 16 dynamic RAMs. So it is that board itself consists of a number of DRAMs. So mem primary memory is a combination of a number of dynamic RAMs so that it will enhance the capability of storing the data. Now how we can improve the memory performance inside a dynamic RAM chip that is by using fast page mode. So uh, first thing is dynamic RAM added timing signals that allow repeated access to the raw buffer without another raw access. So repeated access to the raw buffer without accessing some other row. It was using some timing signals. Uh, in the previous example, the contents of all 4096 cells in the selector row are sensed. All the cells were sensed, but only 8 bits are placed on the data lines that is from D0 to D7. We can place only 8 bits at a time. And these bytes are selected by using column addresses A0 to A8. A modification can make it possible to access the other bytes in the same row without having to reselect the row. So we are considering about how we can improve the performance in a fast page mode. So it is only necessary to apply different column addresses to place the different bytes on the data lines. So that was an enhancement added to the memory performance by having a fast page mode. The most useful arrangement is to transfer the bytes in sequential order. So we need to transfer all the bytes in sequential order one after another which is achieved by applying a consecutive sequence of column addresses under the control of successive CA signals. So uh, with each row uh, access stop we need to have successive column access stop so that we can read more number of bytes simultaneously. A fast mode, fast page mode. And this scheme allows transferring a block of data at a much faster rate than can be achieved for transfers involving random accesses. So this is a better, uh, it will be having a faster access rate and uh, this mechanism is usually called as fast page mode. Now we were discussing about asynchronous dynamic random access memory now we will discuss about synchronous ram which is the opposite of uh, asynchronous ram so uh, basic dynamic ram had an asynchronous interface to the memory controller that means every transfer involved overhead to synchronize the controller so it was asynchronous so every time we need to go for synchronizing the controller as it is asynchronous it cannot be permitted it need to go for synchronization so we can add a clock signal to the dynamic ram interface so that the repeated transfers would not bear this overhead so you know to avoid this overhead we are adding an additional clock signal to the dynamic ram interface so that the repeated transfers can be avoided this optimization lead to the implementation of synchronous dynamic ram that is called as sd ram So now uh, this is the diagram, the same situation, row column address, a row address latch, row decoder and cell array, column address uh, counter, then column decoder, read uh, circuits and latches, then uh, the reading and writing data into the register for each the data uh, input and output available. So now we can see two things, one is column address counter and second thing is we are having a refresh counter also available that makes difference when compared to the uh, normal DRAM that is asynchronous DRAM. So what is happening we will see in SDRAM it is not necessary to um, uh, provide externally generated pulses on the CAS, CAS line to select successive columns. 
the control signals are provided internally using a column counter so uh, one additional thing is added to the uh, synchronous ram that is um, a column counter and a clock signal an additional signal is being added an additional module is being added now new data can be placed on the data lines in each clock cycle and all actions are triggered by the rising edge of the clock so this is the example of uh, reading four length data in the form of uh, rising edge of uh, this clock cycle uh, so just a pulse uh, like synthesis given a clock will be given a read write operation happening on different clock cycles a read access drop happens on different clock cycles then column access drop happens on different clock, uh, clock cycles then address uh, different row and column address that is happening on different uh, pulses and the data is being transferred on this particular four different pulses so it is taking this full cycle through which it is accessing the data so uh, the conclusion is like uh, uh, the new data is placed on the data lines in each clock cycle and all actions are triggered by the rising edge of the clock so all the actions are triggered by the rising edge of the clock cycle through which we are enhancing the performance of dynamic RAM now uh, another way of improving the performance by improve, uh, increasing the width of drum so to get a wide stream of widths if you want to access small number of bits from the memory uh, without making the memory larger so what we can use is make the uh, drums wider that means we it need to use uh, 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 initially it was using 4 bit transfer mode but later it was changed to 16 bit buses so memory buses the bus connected to the memory was made wider so that we can access more data simultaneously so ddr2 and ddr3 uh, they are had up to 16 bit buses earlier we had only 4 bit so it was modified to some 16 bits so that much wider the data access so we can increase the uh, bandwidth of the system also then another mechanism for improving the performance of uh, DRAM memory is to double rate double data rate so to increase the bandwidth data is transferred on both the rising and falling edge so uh, in order to increase the speed so previously we had discussed only when the pulse is rising we were transferring the data but in the case of when we double the data rate we need to uh, 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 transfer the data when it is rising as well as it is uh, falling both situation uh, need to transfer the data so we can have more data being transferred so that was an enhancement added to the dynamic RAM uh, that is the data rate is doubled by this because uh, this data one uh, cycle the other uh, falling side also it is accessing data so more data can be accessed and this optimization is usually called as double data rate now another way of improving the performance is by adding more memory banks to perform interleaving like pipelining if you want to do more memory access uh, SDRAM introduced banks that is breaking a single memory into 2 to 8 blocks that can operate independently so separate set of banks can be produced so that simultaneous access of different data can be possible at a particular time so uh, uh, creating multiple banks inside a dynamic RAM effectively adds another segment to the address which consists of a bank number so every bank will be having a number a row address and a column address through which we can access different data simultaneously parallelly by accessing different banks and its corresponding rows and columns by using its row address and column address so uh, so we were discussing about uh, the uh, aspect of uh, how to uh, how we are creating the primary memory and cache memory the difference between cache and primary memory cache is uh, created by using a static ram and primary memory is created by using dynamic ram 
the structure of static ram we have seen how it is being created how transistors are uh, positioned within that static ram how it is being working similarly for dynamic ram also how the memory is being organized how it is the difference between the static ram and dynamic ram how we can improve the performance of dynamic ram by improving the data rate by improving the memory bus wider by improving the data rate or uh, similar by adding more number of banks divisions of memory etc etc we can improve the performance of the primary memory so uh, that is all about the different um, types of memory creation that is the uh, uh, static ram as well as dynamic ram thank you